Hi, I'm Michael Valenti, and uh, welcome to my cycling art studio. Today, we're going to draw something that I draw all the time, bicycle. So let's start. We have a um, large piece of watercolor paper here, and I have my little cardboard frame. And I always start out this way, where I put a, a kind of a light pencil line all the way around my frame so that I have a little two inch border on my page. This way my drawing doesn't ever run off the page um, and uh, because I'm sure that's happened to you, you start drawing something here and all of a sudden you're over here and it doesn't fit. Very simple shapes to draw a bicycle and it works for just about any kind of bicycle you can think of. So obviously, the, 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 you're gonna think, the first thing I draw is the circles and it's not. The first thing I draw on a bicycle is a very light shaped triangle, okay? So I draw a triangle, flat on top, pointing on the bottom. Now, from that triangle, I can draw my two circles, okay? Big circle here, and another big circle here. Now, these two circles are about the same size. Again, you gotta remember, it's a drawing. You can make things as wild as you want, or you can make them as perfect as you want. Depends on your style of drawing. Both of these circles kind of fall on the same line down there. That's gonna end up being the road eventually, right? So with this triangle, what you've done is you've created the frame of the bicycle. And if the bicycle's moving in this direction, the frame comes down to the point in the center here with a line. Take the center here and a line, and you take the bottom of the triangle with a line. So you now have made the whole frame of the bicycle. You would extend this up here, make a saddle, and you would extend this uh, right here a little bit. This, it would be where the stem would go, and then you'd have your handlebars. So there's your basic, lightly drawn frame for a bicycle. They all work pretty much the same. Now, on top of that bicycle, I'm gonna try and put a person. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my cyclist Kind of start a long oval shape here, and then I'm gonna kind of swoop it down here. I know that what happens on a bicycle is that from here, you have two pedals up and down. So I'm gonna put one pedal here, and that means the other pedal's here because they're opposite each other, opposite from the center, okay? So if this pedal's here, that means a foot's gotta come all the way down to here. So now I got a foot all the way down here, and I make, now this is how I draw, big swoopy lines, okay? That's how I like to draw my cyclist. That means my other foot is back here. Now that leg has gotta be the same size as that leg, so it's gotta go someplace, so it's gotta go up higher. So now I've got a high leg and a low leg, and I got a front leg and a back leg. Boom, 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 boom. Really light pencil lines, just keep, keep thinking about the drawing as you're drawing it, as to what really happens, and then change that and make it work for you. So I got his waist on his body now, and I'm gonna make it a guy because, here we go here. Now, arms, we need an arm. We know the arm's shoulder starts right here. We're gonna have it come all the way down to his here. Now that looks about right to me. I'll take that. And now we know that there's another one that's on the back side to the other handlebar. And we can put that one right in here. Now last, we need his head. So here's his head. We got a nose, we got a chin, we got a neck, we got a cap, we got a helmet, boom, 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 we got an ear. All right, so we have basically drawn all the bits and pieces that we need um, for our bicycle. Now I will put my pencil away. I'm gonna take my little Sharpie marker I like to work with a Sharpie marker because it's waterproof. Now with the Sharpie, I start to draw again on top of my outline. Remember the, the lines that I've already drawn have basically just been a guideline for me. They've been, they become a guideline so that I can kind of go, oh, this is what I want to do. 
and it helps me stay on the page where I want to go. So now I know that if I'm going to be drawing, I know the shapes and the areas that I need everything to kind of fit into. I got a helmet, got to have a neck, right? Got to have that little thing that hangs off of your jersey. Definitely got to have that little bit. Um, now, I got his body comes all the way around to his saddle, all right? And I'm going to just keep on going with this. I'm going to take it all the way down. Oh, I'm going to give him a little, I'm going to take it all the way down to where I put his foot, all right? I got a foot right down here for this guy. A little kneecap right here. I'm going to bring it back up. All of a sudden now, I have his first leg, and I have this body sitting on top of my bicycle. Now, I'm going to take this arm down here, a little hand, and take this arm back. Now, what you have to do is you, things have layers, so you have to kind of draw, when you draw on these things, so you have to draw the front up layer first before you draw the background layer, so that what happens is you can put the background things in the background. Like, for instance, I'll show you right now, we know that when the handlebar comes out, of his hand, it goes behind that arm. See? So you put it behind that arm. Now, do you really have to worry about all that stuff? Nah. Do I? Sometimes. Not always. Okay. And then you just keep filling things in. Um, I know that I have another handlebar back here that I had put. And I have another hand here. And I'm just going to kind of put a little line in there for that. There's my bike rider. Now, on my frame of my bicycle, I know it goes behind, right? It goes behind that leg. So it's going to come down here. And it's going to come down here. Now, I have my pedal. Ooh, kind of messy, but I'll make it work. I got a pedal there. And this goes back up, back down, back down. There we go. Again, do I care? No. Nope. Because it all adds up to something that works. There's other foot now. If I look at this, it really should be somewhere around here. So I'm going to put the other foot there. But before I do that, I have to kind of put in this wheel because this wheel goes in front of that back foot, right? So on your last leg here, right back in here, then I'm gonna show you how to give it some very simple depth and dimension once you have your cycle. Oh, look at these floating. I guess we need that saddle bit, right? All right. And the faster you draw, the better. At least for me, anyway. I don't want to think about it too much. I think if I think about it too much, I care too much, and then I have no fun. And I really just want to have fun. So there we go there. I guess we're going disc brakes for this guy. All the way around. Give him a little gravel road here. Kicking up some gravel. There we go. All right, so there's our basic, there's our bike rider and he's ready to, oh, you know what he needs? Uh, we'll give him a water bottle. Let's give him a water bottle here. And we won't give him one there because we're already making a mess. Um, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. I also have, now sometimes what I do in my drawings is I actually use that line up there to draw the frame. I don't always, I do sometimes. Here you go, done, let it go. You're gonna add more to it now. You're gonna add color to it and you're gonna add more ink on top of it so you don't have to finish every little bit. This is a kneaded eraser, and I use it now to clean up 
some of the pencil lines that I drew in there first, because I don't want those pencil lines later after I use my watercolor and my ink. You can leave them, it's up to you. If you used crayon, do not erase on top of crayon. You'll make a major mess. All right, watercolor brush. My half pan of watercolor paints, a little bit of water, and a, a rag to um, dab things that I need to dab. I'm gonna start with this guy, the big, big sky. All right. There we go. Like I've said before, I mix my paints here, but I test them here so I can see what I'm getting into. So now I like this, so I'm gonna start in my background. So behind my cyclist, I'm gonna start my background. Huh? And I'm just going to paint in behind him because this is the sky and to the background. This is where I want it to just kind of have this. You would call this kind of a vignetted sky. I don't fill in the whole painting. Um, I like it when a watercolor is nice and loose. And there's a lot of little happy accidents which means things that happen along the way, you let them, you go with it. You don't try and fix it. There's no fixing it. There's no fixing watercolors anyway. Here we go. Oh, and yeah. So let's leave our guy here like that. This is how I paint pretty much every day. Now, we need Jersey. Hmm. What should we do? I'm gonna go. I know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now remember I've told you before, you can Take paint off with your brush also. So if we put too much paint on, you can take some of it off. Now, I need a little gray. So I'm going to put a little, to make gray, I'm going to put a little brown into my blue. And that will make kind of a grayish color. I want to put a little gray right through here. I also want to use that color. For my rider's shorts, the bibs. Okay. Okay, a little more brown here. Mm, I'm not happy with this, I'm not happy. There we go. There we go. Because what I want to have happen now is I have to start working some shadows. And we've talked about shadows, you've seen shadows. Um, I think of where the light is coming from. And on my drawing here, the light is coming from over this side right here. So everything has a shadow in that direction. And as I do that, it starts to take on some shape. Okay. So since he's got uh, his uh, white helmet and his white shoes, we'll leave it all white. We're going to make his bike 
think we gotta go with a nice bright red bike kind of Again, don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Just do it. You don't need to fill inside the lines because you made the lines. There's no right or wrong. There's only what you want. So since I'm really trendy, not really, I'm gonna go little gum wall tires, huh? Definitely. Gonna fill our tires out. We're gonna take now. I'm starting to add a little bit more dimension to the bike by adding some shadows in some other areas. Okay, and what that'll help do is is have your drawing or your painting kind of liven up a bit. So everything is not all the same exact color. One flat color. You start this, you're going to start feeling some shadows um, and some dimension. And that's part, part of what you have to do to make it feel more fun. Add a little more color in my background. And you can see I, I push my brush sometimes like this. It's called scrubbing. And for me, what I like about it is that it gives me a nice, rough, vignetted edge. See that little splattery thing there? I like that. I just like it. You don't have to like it. You don't have to do it. I like it. Um, and what happens now is that once I put a little, I'm gonna dry this a little bit with my hair dryer. And from there, we will then put some ink on it. So I'm going to take my hair dryer and I'm going to dry this. So once I've dried my watercolors, it is safe to use my pen and ink. I like a nice um, dip pen. Um, and I use that to, to start adding detail to my drawing. Now, when I use this, I don't have to stay on the same lines that I've already done. In fact, it's better when I don't. It actually works so much better when I start to add more detail beyond what it was that I had already started to draw. And it just I just use it to create more dimension and energy in the line. So now it's not just this, a skinny little, for me, it's not a thin little pen line, it's a big fat wobbly pen line, and I like it. This could be a crayon, this could be a big magic marker, this could be a pencil. A lot of watercolor draw, um, artists use um, pencil. And, and don't use ink at all. Probably the most traditional way. I draw every day 
and sometimes I draw on a big page like this. Sometimes I just draw in my sketchbook or sometimes I draw on my computer. So um, I work in all three of those mediums, digital, um, watercolors. I even paint large painting acrylics like the one behind me. So, no thinking, just drawing. And it's much more fun. <laughs> because you don't have to worry about making it perfect. It's your drawing. It can be anything you want. In some cases, the looser you make it, the better. At least I would say that's what works for me. It's not gonna work for everybody because it may not be their personality. This is how I draw and paint when I go to the Tour de France. Uh, the, or I'm outside, or I'm at the Giro, uh, or any of the races that I go to in the United States. So there you go. Some ink on top of our watercolor, finishes up our drawing. some dirt flying and there we go voila finished I think that worked out pretty well thank you for joining me I will see you next time ciao